In the past, we've covered nutrient restriction, microbiome, blood replacement, and several other ways to extend our longevity. However, there are unique molecules that also seem to have effects in extremely unique ways on our body. As with all the other videos in this series, and don't worry, you don't have to have watched all the others to understand this one, we'll rely on a video by The Economist to set the stage on these molecules, what they're called and what they do. But since The Economist discusses it for about a minute only, it seems only right to have a scientist go into far more depth for you. Let's begin. It might take blood and guts to stay this young, but a range of different drugs are also showing promise at slowing down aging. And some of them have been on pharmacists' shelves for years. A class of drugs that includes dasatinib, used to treat leukemia, has been found to extend life in animals by attacking a major contributor to aging. There's a certain kind of cell called a senescent cell. It could have been any cell in your body, but when it becomes senescent, it stops dividing, no longer proliferates, and it becomes highly inflammatory. It's a little center of inflammation right there in your body. And that's a problem because inflammation is linked to a variety of age-related diseases. In animals, where they've cleared senescent cells, it's really remarkable. The animals don't live that much longer, but they're much healthier. Currently, there are nearly 20 clinical trials globally for therapies that clear senescent cells. They're talking about senolytics, which are a class of molecules that eliminate senescent cells. These cells, which are often called zombie cells, because they often cause other cells to become senescent as well. Okay, but how does that all happen and what is senescence? Then we'll discuss the molecules that combat it and no, we won't be only discussing drugs. Many, but not all of your cells replicate. They divide into new cells, generating new cells to fulfill the functions of your body. Fortunately, your cells are genetically programmed to undergo senescence or the stopping of the cell division when they accrue signals that force them to stop dividing. This mechanism of senescence is believed to exist to avoid cancer arising since certain triggers can cause cancer or the exact opposite of senescence, uncontrolled cell division. The triggers that cause cells to undergo senescence are multifaceted, but one is DNA damage. When the DNA that makes up your genes housed in the nucleus of your cells is damaged, the damaged DNA leads proteins within the cell to recognize this damage and increase the production of a protein called P53. P53 then acts as a transcription factor, meaning that it binds other genes and encourages them to be read and eventually translated into functional proteins. One of these proteins is called P21 or cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor by its full birth name and P21 will then interject itself in the mechanisms, the proteins that tell the cell to divide, thereby stopping them. As a side note for you nerds, if the cell is able to repair its DNA in the time that the cell cycle, the cell division is stopped, P53 levels may drop again, and the cell can then continue dividing. However, if the damage is too extensive, not only is P53 elevated, but its sibling, P16, is also expressed, leading to long-term loss of cell division, thereby entering senescence. Keep that protein in mind, P16, it's going to be important. But that's all well and good, but what about all this actually makes these cells zombie cells? Ooh. One of the key differences between a quiescent cell or a cell that's just chilling is the fact that the zombie cells produce SASPs, or senescent associated secretory proteins. Technically, the definition is a phenotype, not proteins, but they're pretty interchangeable. SASPs are a bunch of cytokines and chemokines, molecules, that attract immune cells. Because these cytokines, like interleukin-6 and interleukin-8, can cause a pro-inflammatory state, the idea is that SASPs would attract these immune cells to have the immune cells then eliminate the senescent cell, removing it by killing it through controlled means called apoptosis. There are many, many reasons that senescent cells secrete these SASPs, 
even influencing nearby cells, sometimes positively and sometimes negatively. But it's the negative aspect that makes the senescent cells zombie cells because they can influence nearby cells to turn senescent as well. Unfortunately, we can't get into much detail here because I have some promises to keep, but at least you have a trickle of information on the topic of senescence. It's there to protect, but an overwhelming number of senescent cells leads to constant pro-inflammatory signaling, along with further damage of the surrounding cellular environment. And as we age, our senescent cell, zombie cell, burden increases. So what can we do to actually remove this burden? That's where the other half of this comes in, senolytics. Senolytics are a group of compounds, molecules, that eliminate senescent cells. So in this video, they're discussing desatinib, which is a drug that's used in cancer that's been found to also eliminate senescent cells. Now, the studies that I've been able to find have all used a combination of treatments between desatinib and quercetin. One study did give this treatment instead of to mice, to monkeys. So I looked over the study and the researchers took a number of immune measures, as well as some general health measures like inflammatory molecules, uh, body fat, and so on. In direct relation to senescent cells, they looked at the gene expression measures of P16 and P21 that we discussed earlier. Here is that data. The dark bar is the treatment condition, so desatinib plus quercetin. And the white bar is the control condition, meaning no drug exposure. At baseline, both groups are the same, but after three months of exposure, the treatment group experiences reduced levels of both gene expression. If that means that the cells uh, reverse their senescence or if the cells become eliminated, we can't say based off of this data. These measures are also gene measures, not protein levels. So they can be a bit misleading if interpreted in isolation. While this is a little bit of evidence, I didn't find the study as a whole all that convincing, especially when the treatment had little to no effect across a host of other measures. On the other hand, this study did present more convincing data on desatinib's role in removing senescent cells. The researchers took scar or fibrotic tissue from patients and applied the treatment to the tissue to see what would happen to the cells within. Here's some of that data. This is a measure of beta-galactosidase, a more direct measure of senescent cells because it's a biomarker of senescent cells. They are testing two different sites, but if we look at the most distinguished one, the lesional, we see that with increasing desatinib treatment, there is a markedly reduced level of this senescent marker. We can even see that here corroborated by reduced P16 levels that are actual protein levels. So, it does seem that desatinib has some evidence behind it, but I imagine that you, you don't want to be using some chemo drugs on a regular basis. So the real question is, are there non-drug senolytics? It just so happens that a while back, in actually one of my Physionic Insiders live sessions, I was asked to cover a senolytic for its effectiveness. I didn't plan on plugging the insiders here, but... I cover this kind of content in great detail for the insiders, along with much more application information. So if you're ever wanted a place to get all that information along with how to use it, I can't recommend it enough. There's a link for you to join in the description. But what senolytic are we talking about? Fisetin. I had never looked into this, but an insider asked me to cover it for them, so I did. And here we are looking at fisetin again. For example, this study exposed mice to fistin over their life and, well, look for yourself. The black line is the amount of P16 identified in the mice not fed fisetin, and the red line is the amount of P16, remember that's the long-term senescent protein, in the fisetin consuming group. It's consistently lower across their lifetime. I mean, that's pretty damn exciting. Of course, I'd like to see more studies on the topic, and I cover a few more in the Insider's Office Hours content, hint, hint. But uh, there are several clinical trials being done with fisetin, so we'll know in a year or three if that actually translates to humans. Although that isn't the only senolytic, and for that matter, it isn't the only longevity molecule to have positive longevity effects. Another is rapamycin. Rapamycin is a potent one, but is the science really that solid behind it? And 
are there other molecules other than rapamycin? Well, let's discuss in the next video, which you can find right here. Speak to you there, unless you turn into a zombie before then.